Myron Swiston uh, here, and today I want to get uh, to the Regina Five um, as a movement on the prairies, 1958-1968, but I just want to come back as a backdrop again uh, with modern 20th century uh, behavior and conduct, 100 million people killed in the 25th century. 100 million people killed in the 20th century through all the wars in the 20th century. It's time uh, we give this over. Um, I want to continue uh, with, of course, a couple of other things just before um, this uh, Regina Five. The Stonehenge age in uh, Britain on Salisbury Plain is, uh, say, five to maybe 7,000 years ago. And as reference, the caves, Altamira, uh, Lascaux, date to 25,000 years with the painters uh, bison and uh, wildlife and uh, reference to the human hand, uh, numbers perhaps, um, maybe a language of symbols. And our recent understanding is that in South Africa, Mpumalanga, the high veldt, South Africa, dates to 75,000 years ago of human habitation. Uh, Michael Tellinger uh, has uh, recorded uh, 1 million sites of human habitation that date back. So perhaps there's some um, uh, reasons that these um, civilization existed a million sites in South Africa have some reason, and we know very little about it, but it is human uh, habitation, and our survival uh, depends upon our awareness of our long uh, lineage. One of the most important members uh, is Ron Bluer of uh, Regina Five. Of course, Ron, when I talked with Ron Bluer, he was kidding me that all of us Abstract painters um, have all these colors to choose from, and he basically uses um, just white and tones of white and off-white um, in his paintings. <laughs> I guess this is uh, 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 quite true. Uh, Ron Bluer in his early work, his very early abstraction work, uh, was gestural. You can see the connection. Uh, I was quite, when I looked to really see the Riopelle slash um, uh, Jackson Pollock uh, connection. Um, uh, the Ron Bloor is a real fresh air uh, amongst uh, these uh, Regina Five uh, painters. Ron, of course, spent a lot of years teaching at York University, and so he had many students, of course, that he came in touch with. His work uh, after the uh, abstract expressionist work, very few paintings of that, but we have a lot of work with white and some of his drawing work, white and black, but they're quite elegant. Um, uh, they're, they're tonal, they're architectural, architectural references, they're flat, like the prairies, uh, prairie reference, they're quite large. Um, the uh, uh, very linear, uh, geometric without color, uh, and quite spatial. The the negative, uh, negative and positive spaces uh, in in these paintings are quite substantial and quite elegant. I would say then that he's uh, quite among Canadian painters, of course, a strong uh, Canadian. Uh, painter influence. Of course, he was in Toronto for many years, and so there is some influence uh, through his students, 
and uh, people in, that he came in contact with um, in his shows. So that's a, a kind of a really uh, great thing. The Natural Ga National Gallery had the show, of course, 61 toured coast to coast and showed the Regina 5 uh, exposed uh, Regina 5 painting uh, to the rest of Canada. Um, the group um, has some a few members uh, that really are regional and never really uh, reached out across Canada or across um, into the United States. Ted Goodwin, he started his work uh, with his gestural abstraction um, and really had a safe bet returning to Group of Seven, uh, very traditional landscape painting, um, very well received, of course, and he was teaching at the university, uh, and that kept his income, um, but really never uh, got beyond uh, the prairie borders. He was fairly local uh, painter. Ken Lawhe, Ken Loghead, Lawhead, um, of course, was influenced by Barnett Newman with large gestural uh, abstractions uh, related to uh, color field, geometry. Um, and he then uh, later uh, returned to traditional representational uh, 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 ocean scenes, uh, uh, landscape themes, um, who knows for what reason, perhaps the, the difficulty doing abstraction, whether a color field or, or, uh, or geometrical abstraction, it makes it difficult to uh, find an audience. So obviously he would have a ready-made audience uh, dealing with this representational painting. Art McKay, uh, again, uh, did Mandela's uh, textural work. You can see that there is influence from uh, I would say Jackson Pollock, it's very textural paint. It's kind of pattern making. Uh, the wheel has some references to time. And again, the prairie has part of that um, influence. And uh, Doug Morton, the last member of the group, of course, uh, really stayed with geometric uh, color field uh, via uh, Barnett Newman. Um, and it really became uh, uh, part of uh, traditional uh, painting in the, on the prairies. Uh, so without this National Gallery uh, exposure coast to coast, these Prairie Five painters would have really just been Prairie painters and known for the influences, of course, of uh, the New York Abstract Expressionist. The bright light, of course, was the Emma Lake uh, School, bringing artists from the uh, United States, Olitsky, of course, and Barnett Newman uh, to the Emma School, Emma Lake School. And so the uh, comparatively, it, it stayed regionalized and really didn't break out uh, into the rest of Canada or the rest of the world, the United States, became fairly uh, localized with Ron Bluer uh, being really uh, the star. It's difficult for the artist. I mean, culture um, is an artificial reality. And to break through the enculturation process, to be unenculturated, to see a visual reality is a difficult one. And I can see where the prairie painters had a difficult time with that to continue uh, with abstraction, uh, geometric landscape, gestural abstraction. It was a difficult uh, process uh, for, these, um, for these artists uh, to do. And comparatively, the automatistes um, uh, the the uh, painters eleven in Toronto, in Ontario, Automatis in Quebec, Canada, really uh, got going and had more influence uh, 
uh, in the uh, abstract uh, means, then the Regina 5 um, uh, had an opportunity to really plumb the depths and take some really serious bites on uh, abstract painting. As I mentioned, um, Otto Rogers, of course, uh, prairie painter, and of course, flat shape uh, design, thin paint, uh, minimal means, and bright light on the horizon extended out, of course, is Ivan Erie uh, on the other side. So I think uh, Bluer, Ron Bluer, and uh, Ken Lougheed, of course, was of really stars um, in that group with the influence extending beyond um, uh, beyond the prairies. I'm going to cover uh, again, I'm going to come back to Painters 11 and the Automatiste, and I still want to cover uh, Cy Twombly, and I haven't forgotten about the acrylics and the oil uh, comparison, um, which I'm going to uh, uh, touch on again. Uh, thanks again um, for the visit, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.